It's reaction time, Andy Elliott's seven strategies to boosting profits for the car salesman. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. Today, I'm joined by the amazing Elizabeth as we react to the seven strategies for raising gross as presented by good old Andy Elliott. <laughs> well, interpret gross as boosting profits. Everything out of Andy's mouth today will be about getting you to forget about your finances. As our followers know, the Homework Guide channel prepares car buyers with research and homework to do before the car sale. We give you great car buying strategies and things you need to be aware of. Well, today's video is about a struggle for control and the one who gets controlled loses. Well, pay attention to that. Let's roll the video. This video is gonna give you seven ways to increase your gross. You're gonna love it, check it out. Hey guys, let's move in. We're gonna talk about seven ways to increase your gross. The first thing I'm gonna talk about, you may have heard it or maybe you haven't. I'm gonna talk about the word being triggered. That's a popular word these days, isn't it? Totally. Find out what he's talking about with being triggered. All right, yes, it's one word. It's called triggered. So whenever a customer gives an objection, right, what happens is obviously you've met that person, you have a relationship with them, they've seen your natural state. So as I see Sean's natural state right here, he's a great guy, he's cool, he's helping me buy a car, he's excited, he's showing me the vehicle, boom, I bust him in the mouth with an objection. Mike Tyson always says everybody has a plan until they get in the, hit, hit in the mouth, and then what happens? You try to figure out what you're going to do next. Being being triggered means caught off guard, shocked, okay? And objections always get people triggered. I so he's saying the car salesman gets triggered because he get caught off guard. And, and what is the customer doing to catch him off guard? Hey, you're disrupting the process. You're asking questions. You're steering the conversation where you want it to go. Great exactly. Things. So if they're wanting to do X, you go Y. Yeah. And continually keep them off of their process. That gets them triggered, and that's a really good thing for you. I need you to understand this. If you want to raise your gross, you have to stop getting triggered in front of your customers when they say things that hurt your feelings that you don't want to hear. Objections are just a part of the sale, okay? Before someone can say yes or go in and buy it, unless they're a lay down, they're going to give you an objection. So when that objection comes in, don't change your state. Look at my smile, look at my eyes, look at my face. This is the same way they say, hey, Andy, you know what? I don't think we're ready to buy today. Don't swallow and be like, man, you know, what's wrong? I mean, what happened? You don't like the car? Is it me? Is it the car? And all of a sudden, that great yeah. guy they met a minute ago <laughs> that was amazing just changes because he gets triggered by getting his feelings hurt, okay? So let's move he on to number two. Feelings, Sean, right? what's number two going to be? Before we jump off of this, I just want to say, so you should always be trying to raise objections, steer the path yourself, and trigger your car salesman frequently. Uh, well, number two for me is build trust. Okay. Build, build trust. trust. So from the very beginning, when you're out of, when your customer steps out of the car, you need to be. Seems like a good thing, right? Get sure. right in the mind for the introduction, the way you introduce yourself. Now I know we're going through a lot of things right now, whether it's the handshake, the elbow bump, separation. Have a big smile on your face and get to know everybody. Take the time to learn their names. Build trust. That's one of the most important words in the English language. Is somebody's name. And then throughout the process, as you build trust, trust is earned. You're not going to go to your customer and say, trust me. You're going to earn that trust throughout the process. That will make negotiations easier. That will help with the, uh, the, the pencil delivery, getting down payment. Maybe when it comes down to getting a co-signer, they trust you, they know you, they like you, they will buy from you. There's an interesting thing about trust in the car business. So it's always emphasized in these sales classes. And... Nothing wrong with this stuff in the general principle of what they're talking about, you guys. These are all sales training things, but we are for you guys, the car buyers, and so we're helping you combat this stuff. So think about building trust. What happens in the car sales process, and it doesn't matter how nice you think the guy is or gal or whoever right. it is that's helping you, what happens as they build trust? What do they do with it? You know, it's a one-way street, and they're taking that street so they can betray you. Betray. They can push your buttons. This is what I want you to do in this car sale. Building trust is about the art of betrayal. Yep. 
being manipulated. Yeah, that's it. And trust is a feeling, okay, guys? Remember, people make decisions, one, logically, and two, with their gut, yeah. right? Yeah. So guess what? Trust your Even gut. Even if logically the deal makes sense, but I don't trust you, I don't have the feeling that I'm in the right place. And at the end of it, you're like, gosh, Andy, you know, the guy was on the right car. You know, the guy, yeah, I got to his payment, but he still didn't buy it. Bro, he didn't trust you. Bingo. That's it. All right, <laughs> talk about buyer and seller management uh, before we get into this one what are they talking about here liz control yes and he who controls the process wins yep he who loses control and gets controlled by the other person loses Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. All right, that's so look. A good one. So number one, the buyer is, is is your customer. The seller is you. You have to manage yourself before you can manage your your customer. Your job is to control your state, control your attitude, control your energy. Right? Control, control, control. Listen, okay. Don't be yapping the whole time. Control yourself, all right? Physically, you're in your responsibility for yourself during the entire sell. And I see a lot of people that don't manage themselves. They just go out there and hope that they run into a car deal and that's it. And by the way, on the flip side, that would be the seller management, the buyer management. So real quickly, I wonder how much self-control that Andy actually exercises. Have you ever noticed like how like he talks about being jacked up and everything else? I wonder how much self-control this guy actually exercises. I, th I guess I think of it more of like a poker face. Like you're not letting, you're keeping a strong facade and not letting anyone see what your next, you know, you're, you're two or three chess moves ahead of them and you're building this game plan. You just have to look like you're in the moment and just kind of fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. I guess. That's a good way to put it, yes. <laughs> With me being, if Sean is my customer, managing Sean's state to make sure that Sean has that feeling inside that managing he's in the right state. place. He's in the right dealership, right? The reason why he didn't buy across the street, it wasn't because of the deal, the price, the whatever. He didn't feel like he wanted to, to be here. You know, he didn't feel like that this was the right place. Inside, it didn't say, Sean, you should buy. You're in the right place. That buyer management is created by me, which is the seller. I have to manage myself before I can manage him. So how to increase your gross is by... I wonder how many car buyers actually think about being managed by the salesman. You know, it gives you that icky feeling if something's not right and you need to walk away. That's your gut feeling. That's your gut feeling. Yeah, it's kind of like this Twilight Zone thing. Like, you know, the <laughs> salesman is just a little puppeteer and... You're the guy who flinches and moves all over, you know, as he pulls on these little strings. Yikes. It's weird crap, really. Managing your customer state, um, their excitement, the level of the atmosphere that they feel they're in the right place, yeah. right? That's so important. I don't think it's talked about enough. Sean, what do you got for us? Number four. Number four, make the process fun. We got to make, make the process fun. fun. Every time your automotive sales pro is working with the customer, make the process fun. Now, everything should be fun. In fact, buying a car, it, for a lot of people, so exciting, it should be a very fun thing from beginning to end. It should be fun, yep. But why is the salesman trying to make this fun? They want you to forget what's important and use your right brain instead of your logical left brain, which is telling you, hey, something's going on here. You need to pay attention. When you're having fun, you forget yeah. what matters. You ignore all the red flags. Like, you just, like, you know, think of something, uh, really regrettable actions you took, you know, that happened in your life. And somebody go, why did you do that? And you know, like, I don't know. We were just having fun. And, you know, one thing just led to the other. Yep. Right. That's how you get hosed on a car deal. We have a lot of things going on. It's the 21st century. It's the 21st century yeah. sales pro. We have men and women that send us pictures every day here uh, to the Elliott Group of, you know, their phones with the camera on their customers during the test drive, in the showroom floor, in the finance office. The customers are used to yep. cell phones being in their face. They're used to having fun. Get your phones out. Take some pictures with your customers. Share it on your Facebook page. Get engaged with your people. Mm -hmm. They love you. Get them to know, like, and trust you. You've built the trust without ever asking it, but by showing it. Now have some fun with them on the test drive. We get videos that are sent in every day. Yeah. Andy and I crack up. About yeah, some, some crazy videos ones that we get. It's yeah, absolutely. You guys crazy. are nuts. You're having fun. Yeah, and have fun with it. Hold more gross. By now they trust you. You're having fun with the process. It makes it a lot easier when you go to close the sale. Yeah, and make it a different experience, all right? Easiest way to do this is it, it just, let's just envision real quick what the experience looked like across the street at your competition who's asleep at the wheel. Yeah. It was fun. junk. It is so uh, funny. They always throw each other under the bus. Yes. Come on. Yeah, so it makes me crack up when dealers, salespeople, finance guys come onto this channel 
and say that we're giving them a bad reputation. Hey, if you want to get a bad word on a dealer, just go talk to another dealer and ask them about the guys across the street. Yeah. They are so quick to throw each other under the bus. And you know what? That's the one time they'll be honest about the car business because they'll say, we are absolutely amazing, but everybody else is crap. <laughs> so that guy who's asleep at the wheel across the road and everything he said and did was junk. But Andy, he's got the plan. I think we need a little bit more of the man in the mirror going yeah. on here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So guess what happens when you do what Sean just talked about and you make it exciting and you're going, Hey guys, listen. So obviously I know that I have a Facebook group, man. These guys are awesome. I'm going to put it here and say, Hey, I got my best customers in the world. They're going on a test drive. Are you guys cool with that, man? You got your new car. They feel like they're celebrities, man. Sounds fake. Guess what happens? You're not like those and guys that are like Facebook coffins group. walking around no. the dealership that are asleep at the wheel across the street. Yeah. Don't be that guy. Number five, create. Okay. And sustain interest okay let me explain to you what i mean here come on Liz. number one <laughs> interest has to be created he just made up a word i think he means sustain interest. yes he does he does mean uh, sustain but um but he's Andy's keeping his not, energy up though <laughs> he, he, he's not a yeah he's substating his energy is he yeah andy it's sustained so when you watch this it's sustained put an s where that b is uh, or get rid of the b altogether it's yeah. just a sustain so anyway Hilarious. Created. And it has to be sustained. sustained. So my goal is if whatever works best for my customer and me, I decide during the fact find qualify what's gonna work. He's I abstaining have to create from sustaining. that in <laughs> Kevin. Sorry. Interest in that in, in that customer. I find out what their interest is by asking them great questions. I get great answers, and then I decide what way I'm gonna go through the cell. I create the interest and then I have to sustain it Substaining. all the way through the negotiation. How many times do you get a customer jacked up, man? They're excited, they're jacked test driving up. the vehicle, they see themselves owning the car for the very first time, right? And this is a good thing. And that feeling, that roller coaster ride about them being excited. Guess what? During the negotiations, it's gone. Your job is to create the interest, but you got to sustain it all the way through the... All right, so we'll ignore his sustain comment, but <laughs> sustaining the interest. So they're making things go as fast, even though it takes really long. Yeah. Everything they go through is fast, 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 fast. And they'll say it to you, how fast they're doing it, how quick, and five minutes this, and two minutes that, all right. and on and on and on. But... Why are they trying to keep you in a situation where the trees are just flying by, you know, th 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 on the They side want of the road. you to go with it. They want you to roll with their process. They want to keep you kind of buzzed and excited and you're stuck in your right brain. You're not really thinking logically. Yeah. And, and, and that's the whole thing. And, and when things are going very fast, you ignore, again, all kinds of details. So there's a lot of psychology involved in what they're doing here, guys. And, and you have to pay attention to that. But it's all to take you mentally out of the game and get you to stop objecting, stop asking questions, stop injecting information. You're actually real wants and needs in the deal. They want you to shut up. Actually, like really funny, and I won't be surprised if he repeats this, but at some point in, in this whole thing, Andy Elliott and his whole group, they believe that if you, the car buyer, are asking questions and talking, the salesman hasn't done his job. Hmm. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah process if you want to hold the grows so create it and then sustain it all right sean number sustain six what do you got here it. number six is very important to me because it's uh, a lot of the things that we work on within you know my family with andy is listening more than you speak okay a lot of the times we get excited and we want to have conversations about ourselves before they jump into this think about the word listen and one of the really common complaints that we get on this channel here is the inability of finance managers, of salesmen, all these people to understand the word no. Yep. So how well do they actually listen? Selective listed? listening, I guess. Selective listening, yes. Well, that is really key to this because watch what they get into here in just a moment with listening and why listening is important to them. What are they listening for? We have to take something into consideration. Majority of us, and ask yourself this question, how often are you truly listened to when it comes to your family, your kids, your coaches at work? How often are you truly listened to? So when you get the opportunity and you're sitting with your customers, listen to them. Listen to what they're saying and use the words that are coming out of their mouths yeah. to go back and close them with the words that they're telling you. There it is. Mm -hmm. Use the words. So listen to the customer. 
and then use your own words against you. That's exactly what he's talking about, to close you. To close you. So again, it's a manipulation tactic, but that's why they're listening. So pay attention to what you're saying. It's very important because a lot of times in life, not very many people are listened to. And I think no. that, that might resonate with you, resonates with me. So be the one that listens to them very closely, get them to be familiar with you, they'll buy from you, and then, then use their words to close the cardio. Yeah, yeah, people have important stuff going on inside of their head, yeah. stuff that you'll never find out about if you don't listen, okay? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and by the way, what Sean said is that, look, if you want someone to listen to you during a negotiation and you want to try to raise your gross, can I ask you this? Will they want to listen to you if you haven't listened to them? No. Okay. Nope. So There's a really interesting thing here that I want to make sure that people don't miss. So think about triggered, build trust, you know, buyer seller management, process fund, interest, listening. Like a lot of these things in and of themselves all sound like great things. Right. But it's really interesting how the lack of human sincerity is evident in every one of them. Yeah, it's all None a one-way the... street. Like, it's only about me, me, me. How much money am I going to make? Yeah. What's that song about? It's all about me. About what? <laughs> I want to talk about me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Toby Keith. <laughs> yeah. No, so there's a lack of human sincerity in all of this. And that's the point. Everything that's done here, the trust, the fun, the interest, the excitement, the them listening to you. All of it has a hidden agenda. Every bit of it is. And that is to get you to forget about your finances so they can take more money out of your pocket. Every bit of it. When somebody's got something to say, listen to it. And since they'll be heard, now they're okay to hear you. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Okay. So look, um, affect, I hope I'm spelling this right. The emotional. He's good at spelling. Emotional. Is that right? Yep. State. Emotional. Of your customer. Affected. Okay, man, dude, this is like no spell Friday here. Okay, so listen, affect the customer's emotional state. That means this, your customers need to be emotional. Your customers, you don't need to be emotional. I didn't say affect your emotional state. Most salespeople, they get emotionally caught up in a deal. That's the worst thing you can do. You want to kiss your gross goodbye, flush it down the toilet, get emotional during a deal, you're gone. Now is your job to be emotional and exciting and have energy and jacked up and show them they're in the right place and have all these steps right here right to hold more gross? Yes, but your customers, your job is to get them emotional. When people get emotional, Emotional, guess what they do? They spend. You know what they do? They spend freely. You know what else they do? They can't walk away from a bad deal. Yep. You fall in love with it and you get all caught up in the emotions of the whole situation. And no matter how bad it is, you just can't walk away from it. So keep your emotions in check. What's really captured here in the whole thing is that he who loses his emotions loses in the yep. deal. And think about this whole thing about... Think about emotion and compare it a little bit to alcohol. The more emotional you are, the worse your decisions are. The more alcohol you've had to drink, are your decisions better or worse? Yeah. Emotion is like alcohol. It takes your brain just completely out of any logical, reasonable thought process. Don't get emotional. Okay, they spend because they're excited. We want them excited, all right? And I just want to share with you, you have to make the effect, right? Is that with an A or an E? It is, is with that an right? A. Gosh, dang it, man. I just can't spell that. I think that's an E. Oh, no. Anyways. Now you correct it I think to the this wrong is comical. Letters. Obviously, you guys know we don't edit our videos. We're straight up. We come to give you value so you can go back and make more money, okay? But affect the emotional state of your customers. You don't get emotional. Their job is to get emotional. If you look at your customers and they're sitting here like this, uh, yeah, what are the numbers? You ain't done your job, okay? I should walk back in and the customer say, well, so have we bought it yet? Have we bought it yet? Are we good? Did they take the deal? Did they take the deal? You know what I'm saying? That's what it should be like. That's the way that this business was created on. And anybody that tells you that things have changed, they haven't. Oh, there, oh. there it's so good. Take you know, that, Steve. Yeah, yeah, Steve Richards is always selling to people, you know, things have changed so much. And you know how you used to have to do this and used to have to do that? Nothing nope. has changed. This has been a, a hogwash business model and sales process for decades nothing has changed the business the environment the availability information and stuff like that a lot of those things have changed but how these guys sell cars hasn't changed a bit it's been a, a bs process from top to bottom for decades 
This business is changing every six months. I understand that completely. Yeah. Internet's coming in, COVID stroke in, we gotta have like ex express buying systems, like all kinds of things like have changed that make us have to do our job a little differently. Digital but this, platforms. yeah, digital platforms, but this can never come out. He's talking about the whole emotion. He's talking about the psychological control. He's talking about the manipulation. It's all of that crap that has happened in car sales process. For decades, yep. none of that has changed, and it never will change until the business model itself um, completely changes. But yeah, it's been that way for years and years and years. You can never take out the emotional end of it. As much internet as we put into our business, I feel like that people have taken getting the customer emotional out because they think they know enough inf information that they're just- We're taking the customer's emotions out, aren't we? We are. Yeah, so it's the internet and it's channels like the homework guy, sadly for you, Andy that are taking the emotions and replacing that with logic and reason. And skill, man. And Get out skill. there and do your thing. That's correct. So, awesome. Just here to buy, and all of a sudden we're like, welcome to McDonald's, can I take your order? You're like a robot, man. Oh, Knock that off, bro, don't be broke. This is the era where sales pros can make 200,000, 300,000, 400,000 a year. Some of the top sales pros we make are making more money than their GMs. Listen. You can get on board, get with the training, check it out. I hope this video helps everybody. Well, I hope this video helped our viewing audience because you needed to understand these seven things are all around the psychology of the sale. It's mental manipulation. It's game playing. It lacks human sincerity from top to bottom because it's all about getting you to forget about your finances. Yes. So you need to interrupt their process, their word tracks. You need to trigger them by asking questions. Trigger them. Yep, you're not doing your job, car buyers, unless you're asking questions, derailing the conversation to where you want it to be so you're in control, and then you know you're getting a lot better cardio. Liz is a pro at that. She takes them off of their game plan, triggers them almost immediately when she's in the dealership. So that's what you got to do. And hey, that actually makes the process kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, it does. A lot of fun for the buyer. Yes, it does. All right. Well, in summary, all seven strategies, as I mentioned earlier, were about mental manipulation strategies. They're all designed to get you, the car buyer, to spend freely. I hope you heard him say that. Well, if you want to get a better car deal, you can't fall into these seven mental manipulation traps. If you appreciate our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there. There's a list here on the screen. The options are linked in the description box below. And if you're new here, make sure you check out all the other videos we have. We've reached over 45 million people now and you might as well benefit from all the great content too. And if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will also be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. But no problem if you can't do a tip. The best way to help us out is to share this video with your family and friends and help them get just as lucky as you did today. And encourage them to subscribe and ring that bell so that you don't miss a thing. You got to ring that notification bell, you guys, because if you don't, you don't get notified of our shows. Well, we're here to represent the car buyer, and that's exactly what we do. I think we do a fantastic job of it. But anyway, thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.